Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at some of the updates in SketchUp Pro 2022. So we did another video, which you may have just watched, uh, that covered some of the brand new tools in SketchUp Pro 22. Um, some cool things, I mean, some cool new commands. If you haven't seen that, uh, go check that out on our channel. This video right here is just gonna cover a couple of the high level updates. So existing tools that have been made to work a little bit differently or tweaked or hopefully made better in SketchUp Pro 22. So this is not comprehensive. This is not everything that's in the release notes. This is a uh, three or four of the high level, uh, what we think will be more, most useful updates in SketchUp 22. Let's take a look. All right, so first one has to do with move and copy. In SketchUp Pro 2021, we made a change with the initial release to the way the copy modifier worked, uh, where rather than holding down the modifier key to make the change, you ended up uh, hitting it once to toggle copying on and off. Um, this was kind of mixed results. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it, uh, but what it resulted in is a further change to modifications to allow you to switch between uh, copy mode, move mode, and what we call the new stamp mode, which is sort of a continuous copy mode. Um, let's take a look at how that works real quick. Uh, so I'm gonna say I wanna make some more copies of this guy, right? these guys right here. So uh, I'm gonna double click to enter this group. I'm going to grab these two fellows right here and I'm going to hit move. So right now, if I do nothing else and I just click, I'm in a standard move. Nothing's changed there. That's exactly the way it always was. Uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's, nothing's different. Uh, if I hit my copy modifier, because I am on Mac, it is option. On uh, Windows machine, of course, it'll be control. So I'm just going to tap that once. Now I am moving a single copy. So if I bump with these guys over here, I hit the button once. They're, they're there, and I'm back to a standard move. So if I click now, I'm just back in move. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this first group. Actually, I have two of those guys. Let's grab this lady right here, and uh, let's, let's clone her. So if I go into move, if I tap the modifier key, option or control, not once, but twice, so if I go tap, tap, see how my cursor changes there? So one hit, I get the plus, I hit it again, I get this little stamp icon. And the way that stamp works is when I click my from point, I get a two and then click to place, click to place, click to place. Hitting option or control a third time takes me back to just standard move. And all of this is active while I'm actually in the model working. So I can say, okay, move this one from I'm gonna move this one from here to here. Then I'm gonna hit option and make a copy from here to here. And no, you know what? I don't wanna just make a copy. I wanna make lots of copies. And I can actually toggle multiple times as I'm going through, as I'm doing this placement. So again, it is down here at the bottom. It does tell you what the modifier key is and what that does. Uh, what's not necessarily clear in this is the more times you hit that modifier key, you will run through. It's basically a three-legged toggle. Is that possible? I'm not really sure. I don't really understand how toggles, that term is supposed to be used. Uh, but it lets you switch from move to copy to stamp. So once that's done, of course, I'll just go ahead and click outside to get back out here. And uh, there we have all of our, all of our clones that we just made. And some of them are stuck in the concrete because I had that turned off. All right, let's keep moving here. Let's look at a change to a command that I'm pretty excited about having been changed. Uh, that is the freehand command. So freehand's been uh, around for a while. Uh, in the standard toolbar, it's nestled in here with line. Uh, if It's also up under the draw menu under lines. But what freehand allows you to do is not just draw a single line from point to point, but allows you to click and hold your mouse button down and drag a line. Um, this has been in SketchUp for quite a while. I will say it is, has not always been uh, an awesome command to use. Uh, in the past, it's kind of, it'll give you kind of janky, not smooth, very smooth lines, but this new version of freehand in, this, in SketchUp Pro 2022 uh, creates very, very smooth lines. And it will also allow you to change planes as you draw. 
So traditionally, as soon as you drew that first segment, it figured out what plane you were drawing on and it kind of locked you there. By default, if I was looking down, it would kind of jump onto the flat ground plane. Uh, if I was drawing up onto a wall, it would keep you up there. But with this new version, I can actually come over here and start on the top here. I can come here, draw down the side here, pick back up on this one over here, come over here, let's go there, and we'll come back up like this, and then we'll come back around to close it. And that's that was all one freehand command, but you can see how I was able to make that so it spilled over from one surface to the next. This is very, very cool option to have. This makes freehand uh, a lot more fun. I'm very excited to see how you guys end up using freehand uh, now that you have this freedom to use it and, and make you know a little more organic shapes, less choppy, less blocky. Uh, very cool command to get to use. All right, we're gonna look at one more update in SketchUp Pro 22, and that is this little arrow right here. You may have noticed already that uh, there's a lot of scenes here. Right, so I have, I don't know, 20 something scenes across here. Um, and you can see that when it, so if I, if, I, if I look at my scenes here, I can see that I got, I, there's a lot of scenes, right? So in this view, it can be kind of rough because you can't actually see all the names. Um, in the bar across the top that gets created when you start putting in scenes, uh, it, it, it abbreviates the names, right? So if I start getting too many here, it'll start short. And so my longer names, so the short ones, Niraj, Ariel, Overview are fine, but this one is Hedge of something. This is Pedestrian, I don't know, and Gathering, dot, dot, dot. So not only do I have a lot of things to read through here, some of the names are also cut off. So this little down arrow right here that's up on, on, this, uh, up on this bar, if I click that and drop it down, I get a vertical list, which is really nice because it's a brief, it's short, right? Because it's I don't have the thumbnail, so it's don't have to scroll through a whole bunch of stuff. It also shows the full name where I don't get the full name up here on the bar across the top. The other thing that's super awesome in here is this search. So if I'm looking for, I don't remember where it is, but I know I had a scene that showed my cars, so I type typing car. There it is. In fact, I don't even have to get all the way to cars. I can. Once I get CA, it shows me everything that has CA in it. So here's my caf cafe layers, and there's my cars. I get to car, I don't have to type all of cars. Look at that, it saved me a keystroke. But then I can just hover over it and click, and it will jump me right into that scene, which is my cars scene. Some would have called it parking. I apparently called it cars. But uh, yeah, super easy, especially if you're somebody who likes to work with scenes, which a lot of production modelers end up with is a lot of scenes. They have working scenes, they have output scenes, they have scenes that are just for when they're modeling. So just, just to toggle things on and off or, or switch styles, that sort of thing. You can end up with, we've seen models with like 100 scenes. Very unwieldy, especially across the top because this becomes like a letter per tab is all you get when you get a lot of scenes. So this little drop down right here, super helpful for navigating once you have more than say five or six scenes. So like I said, not comprehensive. This is not absolutely everything that's new. Uh, if you want to read more about every single piece, I do recommend checking out our blog, blog.sketchup.com, and look for the SketchUp Pro 2022 launch extravaganza blog post, which will give you a little more detail written on what everything is. And then it will also have a link to the release notes where you can actually go in and read exactly what was fixed and added and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for now, hopefully that whets your appetite and you check out those features and the other features that are new in SketchUp Pro 2022. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll not only get notifications of release videos like this, but our weekly skill builders as well. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you like about 2022, what you're looking forward to in future versions. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.